what was the issue between Gatlin and Gene Griffin? I think there was an argument that that happened, or, or like I said, a misunderstanding. So, 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 so there wasn't anything contractual. He's managing the group. It's it, it's just more about the personalities are not meshing. I won't say about it was it was a misunderstanding, right? And so whatever that misunderstanding did got Timmy kicked out the group, right? Gene's like, yo, you gotta go. Period. So we got him kicked out the group. Now, here's the good thing about Timmy, and then I, you know, I won't give him to Timmy still had publishing on this on the Gaia album, right? So whether he came out with the record, came out with the group, did anything with the group, Timmy. Was still getting paid, you know what I'm saying, off of his publishing. Yeah, you said so he, he was wrote smart. many of the songs with Aaron for the album. Yeah, so, yeah, for sure, and and produced though, but and produced because Timmy's a what well, is a producer as well. Teddy came in and it took is uh, he could do this to any rec anybody's record. You could take it if you got a record that's oh man, this is all right. He can make all right, phenomenal. You know what I'm saying? Teddy is that guy. Teddy is the first person that really made SB 1200s and NPCs hip and fly to producers. So, you know, you can't take, Teddy, Teddy's one of the greatest producers on the planet Earth to me. And, you know, and I only, I put him up there and he's with, is Nevada Michael Walton, Teddy Riley, LA and Babyface, Jim Jam and Terry Lewis, uh, Quincy, right? Those cats are the top cats to me, no particular order. Teddy is like, I looked up to Teddy when it came down to production because he always let me be in the studio and watch him. And I learned from him just by watching what he does. And to see Teddy create is a, is a phenomenal thing to, to, to watch for those that, that have, have seen him and being able to blessed to, to work with him and, and see how he um, comes up and shifts his drums. And uh, he, he's just phenomenal. I don't, think, I don't know anybody that can do it like that. Got you. So at the time that Timmy gets out of the group, you come in the group. You mentioned yes. earlier in the conversation, the photo shoot for the first album had already been done by this point. Yeah, so man. you're not yeah. on the cover, if I got this right, of the first right. album, but your name right. is on the first album. Right. It's Timmy's right. actual face with Aaron, Aaron and Teddy. Right. What was that like for you? Because that obviously you had to do a little explaining. Yeah, I I, I didn't do a little explaining. I did a lot of explaining. It was very, <laughs> it was very aggravating, right? Because when I came in, it was like I came in from school, and it was like, "Yo, man, you, you come to the studio. You got to sign the contract." I was like, "I," I asked my dad if I could leave school to go help Aaron. He said, "If you want to do that, do it." I love my brother. To not to my core, you know what I'm saying. I left school just woo, right before finals, going into my second year. I left school, went there. As soon as I got there, I was like, "Hey, what up, Damian?" Like Gene came to me, "What up, Damian?" Oh, you Aaron brother? Oh, I, I, I see. I see how you look. Oh, okay. What's up, man? And he took a contract and he flipped it to the end, you know, to the signature page. And I was like, "Damn!" Like, you know, I was and I was like a a square. At that is, time, is, you know what I mean? Is this a management contract or a record deal contract? And this was a a fucked contract. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it was it was a fucked contract, man. On some real, um, but because of my brother, like I said, and I'm not a naive individual, but sometimes my love can get in the way of what I know best, right? And so when he took the contract, he flipped it to the end to the sign, and I just I saw. Aaron's name, Gene's name, Teddy's name. Even Timmy, even Timmy's name was on there. You understand? And I was like, he said, man, sign it, man. You're you gonna mess up, you're gonna mess me up. I'm like, I, I, I signed it. But I said, can I have a copy of it? So I, he gave me a copy of the, the non-signature copy of the contract. The next day I took it to my attorney. My attorney brought the contract. The contract was eight pages. Let me say about eight, nine pages max. It came back like this. I don't know if your, your viewers can see my finger. My, the, my fingers apart like this. It came back like 40 something pages thick, bro. I was like, what? And my attorney said, please tell me you didn't sign this. 
I said, no, nah, I signed it. He said, man, look, on the real, you, all of you, don't really want to get nothing if Gene don't want to give you anything. You get nothing. Like, so, good luck. You know what I'm saying? Like, and that's what it was, but it's what it is. So, you know, there are a lot of stories uh -huh. about Gene Griffin. Um, for anybody who's worked with him, you hear some good stories and you hear some stories like this, but you dealt with him firsthand. Right. Did it get any better? Or I don't think it, listen, I didn't, all because the contract was bad, I'm not saying that Gene was bad from the beginning. Gene, he did no wrong to me. I didn't think Gene, one way or the other at that time. I was doing it for my brother. So I wasn't going, oh, this contract sucks after I found out. I was like, yo, I'm doing it for my brother. So hopefully, since Aaron did it, maybe it'll get better. And it did, right? In this aspect. Yes, it was confusing to the masses for me because I wasn't on the cover of the album. And we all know perception is key in this game, right? If you are singing a lead to a, a, a top 40 song and you the lead singer, thumbs up for you. Your career might go skyrocket forever. If you're on a cover of, a, of an album that, that becomes the mainstay of New Jack Swing, of people going, yo, great. But I had to always go, they go, all right, D, um, the question was, hey, so man, uh, uh, you know, I, I see you in the group and you can't get in the group, but you're not on the album cover. So how, how do you feel about that? I'm like, how would you feel if you was on the album cover and it's hitting and you the third member of the group and yet everybody's going, they thinking, and nobody ever said, you're not on the cover, right? As far as the masters, they said, oh, I see, that's you, that's Aaron, that's Teddy. Because in their head, because they saw us three in the video, saw us in the in the interviews, they figured I had to be on the cover of the album because my name was on the back, right? But that shows you the psyche of, of the consumer, right? But in the reality, it messed, it messed me up for a while until, until I got upset one, one day we was doing a Tower Records um, in-store signing. And it was had to be about 1,500, 2,000 people outside on the reel. And it was packed. And it was like, yo, come inside. You know, that's when everything was straight. You had to go do mom and pops. You had to go travel everywhere. You did the colleges, you did everything. And it was beautiful because you got to have that first hand-on experience with your with your, your fan or your consumer of the buyer or whatever. We walked inside and it's pictures of Aaron, Timmy and Aaron all over the place. I said, I ain't doing this. I said, I'm not doing no signings, no nothing. I walked out, I'm going back. So every, we all three walked out, got back inside the limo. I said, change the photos. We took new photos, put the new photos up, bro. So it took about two hours. They put all them, took all them photos down, put all the new photos up, I went back in. And then that started, you know, the realm of, okay, it's those three. And that's when you start seeing those cool, the cool photos of me, Aaron, and, and, and Teddy. You know what I'm saying? It changed the whole dynamic of the look of the group. You follow me? I didn't want people to think, no disrespect, but my swag and my, my whole being is completely different than Timmy. You know what I'm saying? So it, it, it kind of finally took us to, okay, oh, that's the group? Oh, that's the aesthetic? That's how they are? They still dress cool. Don't get me wrong. They still, because Gene had that, that visual, that vision for how he wanted us to look, right? And then I started down the line, I started designing stuff for us. So there was a couple of designers, but I started coming up with a lot of the, the looks that we started to wear. Because I then started studying Gene. And I was like, I really, I really love Gene, to be honest, truthful. I think Gene was, was cool. Here's the problem. When you have something, if, if you're not looking at it to where we are all a team, Right, we are truly a team, and you see where you can take advantage of of a situation at times. Many people do it. Many people have done it. Meatloaf, you two got messed up. Let Zeppelin got messed up. You can, I can go down the line, right, of groups that we look up to, our legendary groups that got fucked from management because 
We took for granted that we were going to be taken care of. We took for granted that the, the car that they gave you up front, you're like, oh, shoot, I got a car? They gave me an apartment? I got a, a mink coat? You're thinking they're doing that out of love when and the whole time it was something that was being recouped off of you. You know what I'm saying? But So I, can't, I don't blame Gene for being a, a, a bad person. It's, it's the mindset of how we were brought up, even during his time that we had to take advantage of, of what, it, what it is we was getting into in order to be that person. The education of loving an individual for the gifts that they have that making you into the person that you are trying to be, that wasn't there. You know what I mean? So I think that's where a lot of artists get messed up at. You know, it's like you're not being taught have control of yourself. Know yourself, know your gift, control your content, control your brand. You are the brand. Individually, you are the brand. And in Guy, there were three brands. Aaron, the vocalist, the dog trainer, the dog whisperer. The, 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 he had swag. He dressed up. Teddy, the producer, arranger, phenomenal uh, uh, icon at a young age doing, and doing beats, mixing hip-hop and R&B at a young age. And then Damien, who had energy, drummer, style, I'm, I'm, the way I spoke, the, it, it's, we each had our own individual brand and we didn't know how to embrace that then because we was clumped together and we were told what to do. Do, do you know, because you mentioned how bad this contract was. Yes. What was the worst part of the contract? in your opinion, looking back? I mean, literally, um, everything really. I mean, we, we, we had the publishing we didn't, didn't have. Gene was a fourth member of the group. Excuse me? Gene was a, was a fourth member of the group. A li you he's, he's your manager and yeah. he's literally the fourth member of your group. So he's eating on the publishing side Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He was, you know, he was eating on on all all fronts. Uh, um, yeah, he was eating on all fronts, and he could have eaten off of. And I don't know, you know, because I didn't go too deep in it. And, and again, as a child, and I'm speaking from an 18, 19, 20 year old's perspective right now, not from a fifty two year old man who knows everything at this point, right? At that at that time, I'm not going. Oh, he's taking. He's Instead of us getting us three getting the publishing, he's getting publishing too and taking probably most more of it. Oh man, so we might be getting seventy thousand a show back in '88. Didn't know it. We were talking twenty five thousand, fifteen thousand, thirty thousand, and we was getting a lot more than that. And maybe he was taking some of that. We didn't know, right? So you don't think about those things then, because again, we're being told what to do, and you don't want to ruffle any feathers. When it come down to, at least for me, my love I had for Aaron and Teddy. I wanted us to be great and for, and for my brother to get where he wanted to go. For me, I wasn't even caring about, I want to be an artist. I want to be famous. I want to be this. No, I want to be there for my brother. And, and if me being there for my brother takes us to a level where we become these, this iconic, legendary group, so be it, but damn, if the contract was right, I mean, I, I, and I'll say this, if we had a, a real contract where it was, look, everybody gets a third, third, a third publishing, Teddy might get more if he produce or remix or do this, whatever. Okay, great. Um, for every song Aaron does, Aaron gets more because he's the lead singer of the group, so he'll get more. So we situate it and say, let's say it was 100%, you'll go 40, 40, 20. I get 20, they get 40. Cool, I would've been cool with that because I didn't write on the first album. I didn't sing on the first album. So none of your I, vocals were on the first album? None. Got you, okay. None of my vocals was on the first album at all. When it came to the remixes, yes. But when it came down to the original, no. It, that was all Aaron doing all the lead, all the backgrounds outside of 
Business, and you can call me crazy, which was um, I'll Be Sure and Timmy Gatlin. You understand? And you can tell that when you hear the songs, right? You can, you can say, mm, that's not Aaron. That's cool. Now, if I was in the group, in the group before those records were done, I'm quite sure I would have sung, I would have re-sung Business and re redid uh, You Can Call Me Crazy, because that's what I, I don't, we never sung Business Live, but You you Call Me Crazy is, is huge for us live, right? So I would I would have done that. At the end of the day, though, when you think about, and I look at my career like this, a lot of things could have been different if there was respect of the three gifted individuals in the group. Teddy had a little bit more respect because Teddy and Gene had a relationship already previous to Aaron coming in and previous to Timmy introducing Teddy to Aaron. Gene and Teddy already had a relationship. So Gene knew what Teddy could do, what he couldn't do, how good he was, how bad he was, where his mindset was, his mental, and, and how he can flow with Ted, right? And Aaron wasn't really into the business like that. So Aaron wasn't like, wait a minute, hold on. I'm the Michael Jackson, the guy. I'm, it's like Michael Jackson and Jackson 5. It's like, I'm the voice. Without me, there is no group, bro. Aaron never... Boom, boom, boom on that. You know what I mean? Like, I'm the lead singer. I'm the voice. It's my voice that's making these records shine. It's, it's, it's my talent along with what I did when we first started this record that, that made it go to the level. It, anybody can, you can produce a record. If the right voice ain't on that record, it don't mean nothing, bro. It means absolutely nothing. How many times have you heard people try to, imitate and emulate Teddy's sound, and then you go, oh, that's not quite it. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's not quite it. It's, it's the same thing as, as a producer trying to do that. You know, the closest person that came to emulating Teddy's sound was uh, Devontae Swing. You know what I mean? When Jodeci came out after Guy left, that's when you go, oh man. And then you have a lot of pupils underneath Teddy. Pharrell, Timbaland, Tim Fife, Redhead Kingpin, Rodney Jerkins, all these cats came under the tutelage of Teddy. Right? So you you got think about business. If if we were business, and I am a business person, but if we were business, if I did, if I looked at this and said, you know, I don't care about my brother, I care about business, this whole thing would be a different type of conversation. And and I would I would probably already be worth 400 million or a billion dollars of it. Because that's how strong the brand is. 